need me. My name is Rob Hammond, and uh, just give me a wave out there. If you're listening, you can hear me well. All right, good. That's awesome. We're so thankful that you're here tonight, and uh, we're excited to regather, right? So, uh, man, we are really socially distanced tonight. In fact, why don't you just give a person in the row or the section across from you a little wave so they know that you're, uh, you're moving okay. That's great. We are so honored that you're here. And on behalf of Pastor Johnny and his wife, Jen, it's my privilege and honor to welcome you to Generations Christian Church. Uh, Generations exist to connect people to Jesus. And we hope that your time here this evening, that you will, um, our desire and hope is that you will connect more deeply with Jesus through your time of worship and studying God's word. And so thank you so much for being here. Just uh, as part of a precaution, uh, as you enter and exit, if you put your mask on, but while we're in here worshiping, you can take your mask off if you feel free to do that. You don't have to uh, breathe uh, your constant air the rest of this evening. And uh, so uh, if you want to do that, you're more than welcome to do that. You know, as you entered, you should have received the communion, and we will make sure that's a part of what we do this evening. It'll be part of Pastor Johnny's message towards the end of his message. So if you did not receive your communion packet, if you just lift your hand, we have some volunteers that can help you. We have someone right here in the, in, in the center. Anyone else? One over here. If you guys could make your way to help sh ensure these uh, attendees have um, their communion packet. Hopefully you children. Any children? Any kids in the room? Any kids? Wave at me. All right, a few of you. Parents, as you entered, you should have received uh, a children's worship packet. That will help them stay engaged during our worship time tonight. And so um, hopefully... Children, you can use that to uh, just keep your attention while Pastor Johnny's preaching and while there's a message going on as well as the worship. Uh, lastly, um, giving. You know, we were able to continue doing ministry during these many weeks that we've been away from each other because you gave. And we want to just say thank you for your faithfulness and giving and we want to thank you and ask you to continue to give. And so tonight, if you'd like to give, you can do that. If you look at the screen, you can text to give. You can do it on the online portal, or you can drop it in the offering box that's in the lobby uh, this evening as you leave. And so we want to thank you for giving. Thank you for being able to meet the needs of our community and our church. And, um, you know, the Bible says that, that God gave he gave Jesus, right? And because he gave Jesus, we're never more like God than when we give. And so thank you for your gifts to enable us to do ministry in our community and our area. Well, lastly, as the great theologian M.C. Hammer said, we got to pray just to make it today, right? Some of you are not really with me tonight. I mean, come on, let me see a smile because you're really making me think that I've offended you. I couldn't have offended you. I've only been up here for three minutes, right? We need to pray and ask God to bless our time here this evening. So uh, would you join me as we pray? Lord Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to be here this evening and to worship you. Thank you that your word is alive and it's gonna speak to us in a few moments. And, and many of us are, are gonna, gonna gain hope. Many of us are gonna gain faith. Many of us are gonna gain life. Thank you that you are the life giver. Thank you that you uh, love us, you are for us, you're not against us, you're not mad at us, and thank you, Lord, that you've given us an opportunity to give back to you just a small portion of all the things you've blessed us with. And so tonight, our worship, we give you our best. Through the time of looking at your word and allowing you to speak to us, we give you our best. And then our time of giving giving back a small portion because, God, we realize that every gift we have has come from you. And so we give back to you just to say thank you and that we love you. And we ask this in Jesus' name, amen. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. In this you rejoice, 
Though now, for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials. This afternoon, there are 946 positive cases of the virus. So yeah, I've had a, I've had a fever, you've had a fever, but 102, 103, 103 plus that wouldn't quit. And it was like somebody was beating me like a pinata. Protests spiraling into looting and destruction in Tampa overnight. Looters storming a CVS here, setting fire to businesses along Fowler Avenue. This part of a nationwide protest. So that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and honor and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. The Lord is faithful. He will establish you and guard you against the evil one. I will not cause pain without something new to be born, says the Lord.
give it up to the God of love. Come on, is anybody excited to lift up the name of Jesus tonight? Come on, put those hands together. Hey! Let's sing it out.
Let 
gonna lift our voice in victory. We're gonna make your praises loud. The enemy's been defeated. Come on. you in a prayer right now, wherever you are, just, can we just say standing in this room, would you just pray with me, Father God, there are things that we just want to acknowledge in your presence, and that's what we're doing as we come and we sing these songs. This is, this is as old as uh, the Psalms are. This is a tradition. We are singing your words of your goodness back to you, and none of it is surprising and we are acknowledging that you are a God that comes and moves among us. Your desire is to be near us in our worship. You inhabit our praise. You're here. And that, that needs to, to, to be a moving thing for us. Just the reality that you are here. We're acknowledging that. But we also are acknowledging that these things are true. The things that we are ascribing unto you saying about you. They are true, not because we've said them in this place. They're true because they always have been true. We're not making them more true because we're saying them. The fact is, is that our ear needs to hear our mouth again proclaim who you are. Our ear needs to hear the breath in our lungs and our mouths say that this is the kind of God you are. We need to be eating this. Like this is the diet that we need to consume. We, we need this in our lives just to stand with one another and say, this is who you are. So we acknowledge that you're here. We acknowledge that these things are true about you and we're so thankful. It's in your name we've gathered Jesus. Amen. Amen. Would you guys please have a seat? And everyone, welcome back to church on Sunday night. The five o'clock service is back. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I'm excited, man. I got to tell you, you know, just a little report. It's been a great day. 
It's been a great day, and always uh, on Sundays, it's a blessing to be here and to share it with you guys. And I, I, we are diving into a series for a very specific reason. God's Word is just always on time. It's just on time in our life, and God speaks to things that are just current. He doesn't sidestep stuff. I don't know if you're aware of, you know, kind of, Maybe it's unspoken in your life, or maybe it's just the rule that, you know, mama always said around you. But there are some people that kind of have this rule that there are topics that we don't go near if we want to have, like, peace in the home, right? If we want to have Thanksgiving dinner, Christmas dinner, people over for a Friday night dinner, there, there might be some topics that we don't go near if we want for that to be a good experience. I mean, maybe you've heard the saying before that it's not, it's not polite to talk about at dinner uh, politics and religion. You ever heard that? Like we, our family, we do not, that's not one of our creeds. We're like, if it's an elf in the room, we're going to go after it, right? We're not having fun until there's a healthy conversation going on, all right? But in our country, where we are right now, like people are ratcheted up. I mean, if one on a scale from one to ten is a cool as a cucumber, and you're just like smooth, easygoing, and ten is you've lost your mind, people's median attitude right now is they're somewhere around a 7.5 all the time. They're just like tuned up to a 7.5 of I'm ready to freak out. And it really is because I mean, more than ever, probably in my lifetime that I can remember back, as as a culture, there's a lot of division. There's a lot of division in our culture right now. I don't know if you're aware of this, this right now, but Satan, he's, he is not fully bound. The, the Lord God has allowed Satan to roam, a very real character, to roam this earth. And, and one of the tools that he has in his arsenal is this idea of division. He comes to sow discord displeasure, um, to break people apart, to, to hurt things, to hurt relationships, to pull things apart. It's just, it's one of his number one tactics. And so as we look around, we see that that's where we are. We need good news in a divided America, maybe good news in a divided town, home, workplace. We need it because the enemy has been making up a mess, right? Good news. Good news is that God's and God's specialty is putting broken things back together. That's just what he does. He's so good at this. And he's kind and he's patient. And he's gentle with us in the process. But you, you know that the enemy's working when you see division. You know that God is working when you see unity. When you see broken things coming back together. I want to point you to a text because this is just who we are as a church. We preach from God's word. Uh, the text I would point you to is John chapter 17, one of the most incredible moments in the history of humanity. I got to tell you when this is. Sometimes you look at a text and you're like, oh, that's great. But if you know where it's at, I mean, if you know what's like, happening before or what's coming after, it just it brings way much more to light. Uh, John chapter 17 is the very last moment before Jesus and the 12 leave the upper room, the week of the Passover. This is a, a time in Jerusalem that is always hopping. There are hundreds of thousands of extra people. Jerusalem, small town, been there. Small town still today. You can walk around Old Town Jerusalem rather quickly, but on this weekend, this night in the life of Christ, like thousands of more people have come for this Jewish feast, one of the most famous Jewish festivals of the year. And so the city is on this brink, and all of heaven, all of the, the angels know that uh, the time is coming near, and all of those who follow the enemy, they know the time is going near. And so spiritually, this place is just ratcheted up. It's tense, and in this very moment, seconds before Jesus says, all right, we're going to leave this room, what will happen is they leave this room. Jesus will be seized in the Garden of Gethsemane, and within hours, he'll be, he'll be killed. Just a few hours will transpire. He'll be beaten. He'll be seen before Pilate the Sanhedrin, and Jesus will go to a, a death on a cross. And it's at this moment, I mean, you talk about a, a speech before game time. Or like a pivotal moment where like a leader comes in the room and says, all right, we're going to battle. And this is it. It's actually a prayer. I would say it's the greatest prayer ever prayed by human. And Jesus was fully human and fully God. So we could say that about him. It happens in John 17. And I, wanna, I just want to give you the thing I want to ask you to look for in these first few verses. It's just a few verses. It's a short prayer. Here's the first thing. I'd, I, look for this. Jesus is when... 
the glory that's going to come. Jesus' win is, is our win. It's your win. You look, look at it here, verses 1 through 5. Jesus' win is your win. After Jesus said this, he looked toward heaven and he prayed, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son that your son may glorify you. For you granted him authority over all people that he might have eternal life, that he might give eternal life to all those you have given him. Now this is eternal life that they know you. Jesus is praying to God. He says this is eternal life that they know you. The only true God. And Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I have brought you glory on the earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had before the world began. And some people like to put Jesus historically in a box and say, well, I know he existed, but he was just a really good teacher. Okay, really good teachers don't talk about being around before the world began unless they're crazy or they truly are the son of the living God. By Jesus' own words, we have to make a decision on who he is. And he says eternal life is this, that they would know God, the only true God, and they would know his son, his son who he sent. This word glory is actually used five times in these first few verses. It's eight times in the whole prayer. There's something that happens around this idea of Jesus' win. He is getting ready to go to a moment of glory. Now, I don't, I don't want to act like everything about the cross through every lens is beautiful. If we look at it through a human lens, the cross is tragic, despicable, disgraceful. There's disgrace in the cross. Someone being beaten Clothes torn off and murdered publicly in front of people. I mean, you can, I can't stand at that and be like, oh, that's beautiful. Like, you would look at that and say, no, that's, that's tragic. But through a spiritual lens, the thing that Jesus would go and do on the cross is the thing that all humanity needs. And here's why. There's a, a man who was the first man named Adam. We have all been born through the seed of Adam. And see, when you're born through the seed of Adam, you have Adam's reality, Adam's experience, Adam's tendencies. Everything that Adam has towards his life is kind of what we kind of get. See, Adam failed at something. The thing that Adam failed at is the thing that we're failing at. Adam failed to be perfect. Adam failed to be obedient. Adam failed to, to follow God in the one way that God said, follow me. And so when we're born naturally, like if you're here, you're, you've been born. You've been born through the seed of Adam. And Jesus shows up to Nicodemus a few chapters before this. He's a guy that doesn't want to be seen with Jesus. And Nicodemus comes to Jesus in the night. And he's like, what's going on with this kingdom you're talking about? And the father that you talk about. And Jesus says, you've been born of, of Adam. You've been born the natural way. Here's what you've got to do. You've got to be born again. And this time when you're born, you're born of the Spirit of God. And you're born of, of water. And you're born of, of truth. And when you're born in that way, you're going to experience what Jesus is talking about here. See, Jesus' win over the cross. Jesus defeating death like we just sang about. That win can be our win. We get to share in what Jesus has conquered, there's a guy in my office just this week, and he uttered the words, it happens. Man, it, it just happens like clockwork. And I've got to sometimes just stop people in the things that they're saying because they're speaking death. The guy says um, the church was doing something to be a blessing in his life. And he said, there are so many people that deserve this more than me. And I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. If we base things, if people get what they deserve, we're all in trouble right? Like, let's, let's, let's all be glad that none of us get what we deserve. Stop that. And he said, no, you don't understand. I do bad things, he says. And I'm like, oh, okay, I, I, I get that. This guy named Paul who followed Jesus said the same thing. I understand that. And he keeps pushing me. He goes, but you don't understand. I'm trying to fix myself first. And right there is where I almost had to rebuke him. And I said, stop those words. Don't repeat these words anymore. Don't teach these words to your kids. Don't leave this office with those words because that right there is the seed of Adam. The glory that Jesus is talking about when we get Jesus' win is that Jesus comes in and Jesus fixes things in our life. If you wait until you can fix it, you're never gonna actually get there. 
And some of us, we are waiting. We, we believe that our, our victory, our win, is tied to how much belief we can muster up. Like when we're in here and the band's going and they're singing a song, we're like, the enemy's been defeated. We're in a moment and we've got a feeling. Or like, if I could feel like this all of the time and I could believe like I believe in this moment with other people, man, then I would really be getting a win. And that's not what... That's not what our faith is tied to. That's not what our victory is tied to. Our victory isn't tied into us being able to muster up a little bit more belief. Our victory is tied to who Jesus is, and he's unchanging, he's constant, and his win is secure, and we get the win because Jesus got the win. He gives it to us. There's something about names. There's something about naming um, a child and the connotations that we start to put on names and how those things start to build around a person of a name. And if you know one person that's got a name and someone says it, you immediately kind of have an idea of that person to you. Meet another. I, 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 love, I just love names. When you call someone by their name, you just see their face change, right? When you remember someone's name and you have that connection with them, you see, I, one of my favorite things of going to Disney is not the ride. It's not the parking, that's for sure. Um, it is, in fact, the, all Disney employees, if they've got a name tag on, Right, and you could just call them. You can look at them, and it drives my wife nuts. Right, because I'll be like, "Dude, what's up? What's up, Bill?" You know, and you see Bill's face light up, and then Bill remembers that his name's right here. Right, I, I love that though. I love being able to like call people by their names, and our names. It's this. It's this image bearer. There's something about a name that, that starts to show us the nature of the person. We take on the nature. I want to show you. I did a, a search this week for funny names because I think funny names are fun. Uh, um, sad man. This guy's name right here on the screen is actually Sad Man, which I think is really funny because he looks sad to me. Uh, this next guy, middle name starts with a P, last name Bacon. Chris P. Bacon. That's so good. I want to be this guy's friend. His last name is Register. First name starts with K. Cash Register. Love it. This next guy, he had a really difficult time in junior high. Last name Lee, first name Brock. Mr. Broccoli, Broccoli, this, this guy, uh, last name Pickle, probably could have been difficult junior high, but you put Dill with it, Dill Pickle, right, that's his name, and finally, I mean, if you are going to have this as a name, you better be a really good goalie, Outhouse, really, this is this guy's real last name, he's a goalie, his name is Outhouse, I love it. There's, there's something that is magical and incredible and that draws us in with names and Jesus gets this. And in this prayer, he comes to us and he, he's gonna give us something. We share in the power and the name of our Father God in heaven. John 17, verse six, Jesus continues by saying this. I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me and they have obeyed your word. Now they know everything that you have given me comes from you. For I gave them the words you gave me and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you and they believed you that you sent me. I pray for them. I'm not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, for they are yours. All I have is yours, and all you have is mine. The glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, here it is. Protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. This is one of, one of my favorite things we do is we baptize people into the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit that we share in the name of the Father. And here I hear Jesus is saying, protect them by the power of your name. We get new naming. This idea of give, gave, given, it's seven times in these verses. And a lot of us, and we, we understand that, that Jesus is the greatest gift that God has ever given the world. We're getting ready to walk into that time of year where we talk about that and celebrate that. But in Jesus' mind, right here as he's praying in this text and he is trying to give us the final things we need to bring unity to a divided world, the, the thing that he is viewing, the prism that he is viewing this through is this, that Believers, those who have obeyed and believed the word of God, that they are the gift that God the Father has given to the Son. He looks at 
us. He looks at believers as the greatest gift he's ever received. Jesus' win is our win. Jesus' name becomes a name that we share in. And then Jesus' word guides us. Jesus' word guides us. John 17, verse 13. Jesus uh, finishes the second part of his, his prayer. He says this. He's praying to the Father. I'm coming to you now. But I say these things while I am still in the world, so they may have the full measure of my joy within them. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, for they are not of this world any more than I am of this world. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of it. Here it is, verse 17. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. Now, I know that that's a churchy word. If you're like, sanctify, what on you Here's what it means. I'm going to break down. Being made holy. Being made holy. God says, make them holy. How? By the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them, I sanctify myself that they too may be truly sanctified. Jesus, you want to know what being holy is and being righteous? Jesus is going to the cross. Jesus is on his way to obey the Father from the cross. It's obedience. And we know that this wasn't something that um, was going to be easy for him. A few hours from him praying this, he's going to be in the garden alone. He's going to say, God, is there any other way? Is there any way? If, if there's not, I'm going to be obedient. Your will be done. And Jesus is saying, I want them to be holy. In the way that I'm being holy, I want them to be holy. And Jesus is calling us to that. There's this growing holiness that we are called to here. I mean, the word of God gives us joy. It gives us guidance. It gives us knowledge. It gives us direction. It gives us power to overcome the world and the division that's in front of us. A lot of us, we say, I can see the division that's out here. Like, I can see it. And I can see that things are tough. I can see that things are difficult. But you know what I want? I want to quit watching the news. I want people with bad news to quit texting me. And I just want Jesus to take me home right now. I'm done. I've got so many problems. It'd be easy if I was just gone. And he says, here, I'm not about that. Here's what I'm about. I'm going to pray for you that God will protect you from the evil one. And the, the day's going to come where he's going to take us. But until then, Jesus is praying for you that God would be protecting you from the evil one. And in the midst of that, that you would know his word and it would guide you through the difficult division in your life that we're called to unite. D.L. Moody is a famous preacher from Chicago years ago. And he says this, that... Uh, this book, God's Word, will either keep you from sin or sin in your life will keep you from God's Word. God's Word is either going to keep you from sin and guard you from sin or sin in our lives is always going to be pushing God's Word away. I mean, as we're looking for something in this world right now, and we're saying, I, I see the division, I see all of the problems, and it's so completely overwhelming, and I don't know what I'm supposed to do to kind of bring some kind of peace and some kind of order in my own little corner. It seems so big. Jesus is clear. Right here, he says, it's going to start with my word guiding my people. They've got to know it. They've got to be becoming holy. He ends his prayer with what I think is the theme of really this, this whole chapter, John 17, the whole chapter. If you've got God's word in front of you or if you've got it on your phone, there's a heading above John 17 that's probably the high priest prayer because Jesus is the true high priest. Or it says a prayer for unity. And Jesus' prayer unites us. He closes this way. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message. That's us. I mean, the 12 are sitting there. Just picture it. They're in this room. And, I mean, for 2,000 years, people have tried to imagine this moment. And Jesus prays for us in this moment. He says, my prayer is not for them alone. He's looking at these 12. But then he prays for, for you. He says, I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message. We believe today because they carry that message. This is you he's praying for. 
that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I mean, get that? His prayer here is what? I mean, put some critical thinking on. Like, his prayer is that the world, that they may be in us so that the world may believe that Father sent the Son. There's a correlation, there's a link. The way that we are one with one another, the link to that is what's gonna, that's gonna produce, is that's gonna produce the world, people setting up and saying, I believe that God the Father is real and that he sent his son to die. Why do you believe that? Because I see the oneness, the unity of believers. There, are, there is no reason that some of us in here should have community with others in here. There, there are Patriot fans in here, okay? There are things that divide us, right? There are all kinds of, that's a, that's a goofy thing, but there are real things. I say that one because I don't want to say the real thing because it's, it's truly divisive. I, I want you to come into this moment. I'm going to say that thing that's on your heart right now that's dividing us, it is stopping people in our lives from believing that the Father sent the Son. And Jesus says, let them be one. Verse 22 I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be as one as we are one. I and them and you and me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them, even as you have loved me. I got to start on this because it takes 20 minutes to open it, okay? If you don't know that, you've not tried to open one of these, go ahead and pull it out. It's really careful, and you've got to be really slow, or you will wear it, okay? This is a meal. It's a meal that uh, Jesus set and said, this meal's going to bring you together. Can we just acknowledge it right now that uh, this last six months, even if even if it's been pretty easy for you, I, it's been crazy. I mean, it's been, for some people, lonely. For some people, they're angry. Some people are confused. Some people are just sad. Some people miss a way of life that they might not get back to. And there are, there are those that I know that have just lost people during this six months. There's division. We see the impact of the enemy that is clearly tearing things apart. And Jesus says in this critical hour, if we can just kind of see what he's got for us, he says, hey, the win that I'm getting ready to go and do on the cross, you share in that win when you unite with me. When you come into me as a believer, confessing me, repenting, being obedient to baptism. Jesus says, my victory over death becomes your victory over death. Get that. And he says, you're going to get a name. You're, you're going to get a new nature. And he says, I'm not going to leave you alone. I've given you my word. We've got to know his word. It's going to guide us through the things that we are called to go and put unity to. We are unity makers because it's our birthright. No one else has got the right on the planet to bring unity. It's, this is our birthright because of who God is and Jesus in this world. And we're in him. It's our birthright to go and bring things and patch things back together and bring new life. And Jesus says, all of this is wrapped up in this meal. As we take the bread, it is to signify our commonality. There's, there's so many things that make all of us different here as a body. But the, our need for Jesus, it's enough to bind us and hold us together through everything. And Jesus knows it. So he says, when you come together, you take the bread and you recognize that my body was given for you. And so Jesus, it's in your name. We do that. We take the bread and we acknowledge what it is that you have done for us and sacrificially giving us the win.
in that hour, he took the juice, he took the cup, and he said, this is my, my blood. And it was poured out for you. And so Jesus, we drink to remember that your perfect blood washes us. We cannot fix ourselves. It's you that does that work in us. We thank you. Let's remember him by drinking the juice. Jesus, we thank you for these words. We thank you for the roadmap that you've given us that helps us be a force in our homes, in our streets, the places, just wherever we go, wherever we have any influence at all. You've given us the roadmap to start to bring unity to places where there's division. You are good news. We get the win from you. We get a new name in you. We've got your word to guide us, and you are constantly, by the power of your spirit and your name, you are pulling us together of the, because of the commonality of our desperate need for you. We build our lives on you and you alone. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Can we just take a moment, and let's just worship. Let's just process that for a bit, and these guys are going to lead us in this song. Church, would you stand with us this evening? Let's respond to the words of them. Thank you, Lord. Let's sing this together. Worthy of every soul we could ever sing.
respond to the Lord. Father God, we thank you, Jesus. You're worthy of it. pray and uh, here in just a moment you're going to be dismissed you're going to dive into a new week man it's so good just to be back together as a local body and a family amen it is good it's good I, I we've had and today's just been a great day and we've had a, just a lot of people that have you know been in this season looking for God in their life and we've had a lot of incredible times of prayer and conversations down front. And uh, here in just a moment, when we dismiss and we pray, if you're if you're new and you just don't know anything about the church and God's doing something and you want to learn about it, we invite you to kind of come down front over here to this side of the room. And uh, we'd love to meet with you and talk to you about generations. Uh, we just, it takes about five minutes. We just got a gift for you and we want to welcome you in that way. As we leave, uh, we believe that we should be God is calling us to be a responding church. We read his word and we don't just say, okay, that's good, and walk away, but like he's, he's got something to give us and there's this response involved in all of it. And so as, as we pray, I wanna pray a very specific prayer that um, God would be giving something to us as, as, we, as we leave for this week. And if, if you wanna receive from God, um, and no high pressure, no you know, no, no shame culture here or anything, but I just want to invite you to just put your hands out to him as we go before him in prayer. I believe he's got something for each of us. If you would do that, if you're open to receiving something from God as we call upon his, his name, Father God, many of us in this room, we've just kind of got our palms up like kids. We're coming to you and you tell us, Jesus, that your father, when we ask him for a good gift, he doesn't give us something bad. He, he gives good gifts. He's a good father. We are, we are your children, and we've heard your word, and um, we want to receive from you. We want to receive a word from you. We see the division in our culture, and none of us would walk in here and be like, oh, I think it's great. I like it. We don't like it. 
we don't fully know how to solve it in and of ourselves, but we believe that it's the church's place and birthright and calling to, to be a city on a hill, a light on a hill, to be salt. So we, we know that you've always used people and we think that you've got something for us. I believe that your spirit, spirit of, spirit of the living God, you can come and speak to every one of us. And I couldn't write a personal note to everyone and tell them what they're supposed to do. That's not my role. Spirit, you do that. You speak right to our hearts. And so in this moment, before we walk out and find dinner and watch a game or whatever, would you, would you come to us and just very simply tell us, man, how can we, what are you calling us in our world to do to, to be agents of unity? Just put it on our heart right now across this room. Spirit of God, speak. Some of us want to spin the wheel again. We didn't like that one. Give us something else, right? <laughs> you give us courage to do the thing you call us to. And at times, you, you call faith obedience. And so may we be obedient this week. We don't have to solve uh, division in the world or the country or even our town, but we, we, there's something we can do and you call, have called us to it. So Father God, would you give us the courage to be obedient this week and just may you be glorified in these things. We love you. You're such a good God and you go before us, you go with us. It's in your name we've met. It's in your name uh, we part ways physically right now. Bind us together, Lord Jesus, amen.